Well, everyone, welcome to the Flavored Enemy Twisted Christmas episode. Should be a fun one. <clears throat> so, where we are going to be starting is, it is currently the dead middle of winter. And it has been a long time since any of you have had any respite, respite. And a lot of things have happened in each of your individual lives since and probably about the past year. We begin in a small hamlet on the coast. It's known as Christmas Cove. Now, a little bit to know about Christmas Cove, they hold a local holiday. It celebrates the heroics of an ASMR bard known as Christian Masner. Now, there's a member of the local church of Erdrifania who gives out gifts to all of the kids during this celebration. He is an unaging winter Eldrin who has been at this for the past 3,000 years. And the kids have kind of made him out to be a bit of a legend. Each, each year there's a bigger fable being spread about him. His name is Chris Kringle, but all the kids have referred to him as Santa Claus. So, as we begin in Christmas Cove, we start with Ikmanis Dermia. You want to go ahead and elaborate on how to actually pronounce your name? My name is Ikmanis Dermia. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And his son, Tony. It's been a long day. It's currently about seven o'clock at night and the festival kicks off tomorrow and is supposed to continue on through tomorrow night all the way until the next day. Now, <clears throat> as you guys are currently late into your festivities, um, into your work for the day, you guys are all working over at the uh, tree farm and it's already been a long day. So, what are you all doing And as the tree farm is getting ready to close down for the day? Oh, we'd be, be securing the trees that didn't sell and preparing for, for any that might sell tomorrow. Um, thinking about where we would get, where we would get there have to get dinner at a nice place. Me, me and my son, he's worked hard today. He deserves a nice dinner. Okay. So, Tony, what are you doing? Um, your dad kind of has you working at the tree farm, quote-unquote working, but not really too much of a paying attention as to what you're doing in specific. Tony? Apparently Tony's sleeping. Boys had a long day. <laughs> All right. Well, while we wait to hear about what's happening with Tony, we will step on over into the outskirts of Christmas Cove up a pretty big mountain there's a small hut built into the side of the mountain itself into a cave 
and it's kind of been avoided by a lot of the kids. Um, they have made up stories of a troll that lives inside or great evil monster, a hairy yeti that lives inside. Um, but really, it's the home of Mr. French. Mr. French, how are you spending the day before the festivities start? I am soundproofing my hut inside this cave. Right. <laughs> right. Well, as Mr. French is getting to work soundproofing the inside of his hut in the cave, we cut on over into the market square of Christmas Cove as a chariot drops off the <clears throat> big city big shot known as Orpheus who for all intents and purposes came here to figure out about how to go about buying the new tavern that they just put up here since it has started to get a little bit of popularity due to the festival and you're thinking maybe a, a big turnout over how much money could be made should a little bit more marketing be put into it. Orpheus, as you get dropped off at the uh, entrance to Christmas Cove, what are you doing? Um, well, I would kind of just be like taking in who all is in the town square and like what kind of people are here. Um, just seeing if there's people like me or if I'm yeah. still going to out like a sore thumb. You see that there are, there's a, a gnome couple, uh, a man and his wife, that are um, currently uh, pulling out the uh, harvests and setting them up in crates to sell tomorrow. Um, <clears throat> you can see that there is, through a window, to a chocolatier that you could see that there is a, a halfling inside uh, decorating you know, chocolate covered strawberries as well as um, his partner, a elven woman who is currently stretching out candied um, confections and turning them into shapes of canes with red and white stripes next to him. You can see a little bit further down the road, um, you can see on the left-hand side the tavern that you're here to potentially buy, known as Maurice's, um, who is famous for their eggnog. It's a, it's a little bit boozy, but really tasty. Um, outside of that, you can see that there is a, in the market area specifically, there is a a greenery, if you will. A bunch of um, northern style trees towering anywhere from 4 feet to 15 foot tall. Um, all set up to be brought indoors with nice bases around them and such. Um, you can see that there is a tabaxi currently walking around getting a good idea as to what kind of trees are are there and doing what looks to be stock of, of the trees. Outside of that, you can also see that there is a, um, for lack of a better term, potentially, potentially a gnomish woman, but she looks extremely drunk and is currently knocking back what looks to be three separate drinks on a, uh, park bench nearest the uh, the Christmas tree farm and shouting profanities at the tabaxi. Well, I'm just gonna kind of make my way toward tavern then. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> now we cut our way over to 
Igneus, who is currently drunk on a park bench, shouting profanities at a tabaxi. Okay. So, Igneus, what kind of profanities are you shouting? I don't know, but what if they are no mish? I don't know, but whatever they are, they're in no mesh. So they're very unintelligible to everybody. And you're also completely plastered. Right, that too. <clears throat> so, at this point, we cut over to the, uh, the bank of this area, for lack of a better term. Uh, the bank looks like it is potentially a big city bank, but somehow stuck in a hamlet um, made with glistening uh, marble columns and a gilded door. And you can see that uh, uh, on the outside of the stained glass is the words Ebenezer and Marley. There is a fella here who's still working and enjoying his work counting out all the gold that has been taxed throughout the year now Brigzekio what are you doing with the rest of your work day as you're sitting here counting out gold how are you feeling you know I'm feeling excellent this time of year everyone is being busying themselves with the holiday season and for me I have another focus I'm counting my money here, and I'll be taking it and putting it away, and then uh, going to the seclusion in my cabin in the woods, up in the mountains. Okay. So, as the moonlight grows brighter in the sky, and a small bit of fog rolls in, this dreary day starts to feel a little more eerie as everyone kind of goes about their business. When all of a sudden you all hear the sounds of bells, small bells, bells usually attached to some sort of sleigh coming in the distance. Considering the bard background, can I tell what kind of bells by any chance? Yeah, they're sleigh bells. They're, they're, they, are, they, are, they are brass sleigh bells. Okay. Uh, can, can I hear, I hear any this bells from where because... I am? <laughs> Sorry, can I hear this from where I am? Yes. Everyone uh, can, even even Mr. French. Oni can't hear anything because I am covering his ears because there's a gnomish lady yelling curses oh. and she will not be cursing in having such foul language around my pure boy. <laughs> well, this is new. Uh, can I make a perception check to see if I can hear through uh, him covering my ear? Sure, go ahead. Not 20 for 31. He's covering where your ears would be if you were a tabaxi. So your ears aren't even covered. <laughs> that is he, just has his hand, he just has his hands on top of your head. I'm hearing all kinds of new words today. This is great. No, you are not. No. no. I'm, I'm definitely not. I'm not hearing anything. You sh- Dad, you, I wouldn't you, do that. Are you kidding me? I am nothing but purity and... Rock. Honestly. Rock. Lots of rock. This is great for rock. Have you heard these words? Oh my gosh, this is so popular at school. Oh no. 
You see what you've done now? I pick him no, up and good. just start running good. towards the tavern. <laughs> We're gonna go have a nice family dinner. <laughs> Did he just pick me up and yeet, like, I suppose, towards the tavern? I just picked you up and, and just and just ran. Like, no. Very much, yeah. <laughs> Dad, wait, I wanted these yogurts. They, they sound amazing. Have you heard these? They're so creative. Man, I couldn't even... I, I couldn't even think of these like in my worst minute days. I, I was angry yesterday, but like I wouldn't have thought of any of these words. This is great. This is not great. You are still a child. You don't need these words. You don't need these Can words if you're a child. Can I hear him currently? You can actually see the sleigh coming in from the uh, entrance to town now. Uh, what's As the sleigh? The sleigh like? Uh, the sleigh looks like one that you've seen plenty of times before. Um, yeah. The sleigh of Chris Kringle, known as Santa Claus, coming into town. Dad, wait, 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 wait. We have visitors. Dad, can we see him first? Uh, Dad, I, you can hear me, right? Yes. Um, I, uh, okay, go, go watch the sleigh, but please stay away from the angry drunk lady. All right. Yes. Thank you. Is it, I love you. Is it? Love you too, Dad. Is anyone else going to see the sleigh? Um, I I am banging my head against the cave wall until a little mouse runs over with earplugs for me to put in my ears. I would have been making my way towards the tavern and would have eventually ran into um, Ikman Hayes. Yeah. Make my way so, towards the sleigh. I'll grab up my belongings in the bag, secure it, and make my way. All right. So, Ikmanis, you bump into, um, you bump into the big city big shot known as Orpheus, um, who is a stranger, a visitor to town. Um, as Tony heads up to go check out the sleigh. Can I? Can I help you? Ah. Excuse me. My, my apologies. I was distracted. Like, I, I know I'm short, but like, it, I'm not that hard to see. No, no, you're not. I, I was watching my son. Oh. I, I, as I like look over to the, to the sleigh, I don't, I don't see any tobacco kid. Oh, no, my son is a gnome. Oh, okay. He kind of steps oh. lightly to the side and just staring after where Tony went while also constantly looking back to keep an eye on the angry gnome lady who was shouting at him earlier. No. I'm going to absolutely be nonchalantly as best I can, as an excited young teenager can, uh, be making my way towards the sleigh. Tony, as you get up to the sleigh... Yeah. So, something is immediately wrong. As you uh, get up to the sleigh, you've seen Santa Claus come to town before. You were there last year. And okay. you statistically remember Santa Claus having a head. As you can just see what looks to be something took a giant bite out of Santa Claus' head. And now there's just a bloody mess instead of head and shoulders. Uh, uh, Dad... Dad! Hey, Dad! You also, like, you also start to hear this, the sounds of the reindeer pulling the sleigh, but instead of sounding normal, they sound snarly and more like wolves than reindeer. I'm going to turn around and run back to my dad. I'm gonna and I heard him it. call. I would have just like booked it towards where he was at. <laughs> and roll for initiative. A oh, breath. <clears throat> That's as, a kind of as soon as the uh, roll for initiative, you notice that there's a whirl of magic as packages come from the back of the sleigh and land in each one of your hands. Oh. As oh. each receive your magic item. Okay. Um. I got a dirty twenty. All right. I'm gonna have a glorious four. 
Now 20 for me. Okay. Hold on to those real quick while I get this all set up. All right. Take my niece. Mischief. Four. Four. Tony? Ten. Ten. Orpheus? Twenty. Igneus? I also rolled a ten. Brexekio? Now twenty. All right, and I'm assuming Mr. French is still up in his cave. Until I get my earplugs in. All right. All right, so, Brexekiel, you're up first. Um. You can see that the reindeer have broken free and are mm-hmm. snarling and look like they're about to attack. Oh, geez. Okay, and like how far away am I? Like who's around me and what, what shape? So so everyone's kind of assembled in like a hodgepodge about 45 feet away from the actual sleigh. And from 15 feet from the sleigh, the reindeer are taking up that area. All right. So, <clears throat> mm-hmm. All right, so if they look like they're going to advance on us, and I'm definitely going to go for a ranged uh, cantrip on them firebolt. Okay. Let's see. So here. you can see you can see that there are eight normal-ish mm-hmm. looking ones, and there's one that's slightly bigger and has a red glow around him. Mm-hmm. So oh, are you aiming for the um, bigger one or the regular ones? Uh, right, yeah, going for the big one first. Big red. Okay. okay. Uh, so I rolled a 13, I believe. 13? Uh, so. Should you add, you yes. should... Uh, no, 16, sorry. With the yeah, modifier, six, 16 total. Six, 16 will hit. All right, thank you. And then for damage, that is uh, 11. Yep. All right. So you hurl a fireball straight at this big glowing red one, and the snow kind of evaporates around the fireball's trail as it hits its mark right in the center of this uh, big giant reindeer. And you notice the flesh and fur of this thing melt off a little bit on the spot that you hit and you just see what looks to be uh, blackened reddish flesh with protrusions of bone like spurs coming out of it as you can tell that this is not regular reindeer oh jeez and anything anything else with your turn uh well that was just my cantrip uh Mm -hmm. I can do an attack as well right uh, no, you cannot cast a spell no. on attack to the same person. That's right. No, I'm good. Uh, oh, give me just a second here. Um, you can you can do any kind of movement, or you can use right. any kind of bonus action stuff. Right, right. Just okay. No, that would be it for me right now. Besides the movement, now uh, if there's a pack of them. I'm going to move between uh, the reindeer and everyone else because I'm like a giant knight of Goliath. So I'm going to go take an active stance between them, uh, ready to intercept and movement. Yep, so you kind of advance past everybody else and get standing Mm -hmm. right in front of the group. Mm Mm-hmm. All right, Orpheus, you're up. Um, Okay. How far am I away from the reindeer? Uh, currently about 45 feet. No, 30, 30 feet. 30 feet. 
hell of a time to learn how to play Barbarian! <laughs> um... You said they're 30 feet from me? Correct. Um... And there's... Um... Eight, nine of them total. Yes. One big one and eight regular size. Got it. Um. Oh. You know what? I'm gonna... I'm gonna try to close the gap and attack with my great axe. Okay. That's a roll to hit. There's a 19 to hit. The big. I'm gonna hit, try to hit the big one. Yeah, that'll hit. Okay. Um, uh, that's a nine plus five for 14 points of damage. Okay. So as you sink your axe into this thing. You hear what sounds like bones crunching underneath as uh -huh. it sounds like it's just <laughs> breaking through as your as your strike falls. And you, you kind of like pull your back axe back out in order to prep yourself for your next swing. It like, like the, this like material of like brittle uh, You'd almost, you'd almost call it, uh, you'd almost call it bone, except for it's glossy, and it's, it's like speckled with red and green on it. Oh. It just kind of comes pouring out of the wound. Okay. And it looks like you almost completely cleave this thing's front leg off, but it's does not bleed like like a normal creature would. Okay. Alright, anything else with your turn? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna use two weapon fighting to attack it with my hand axe. Okay. Um. Alright, we're gonna... Uh, it's a 19 to hit again. Okay. No hit damage. Nine points of damage. Okay. You land the second strike on the opposite side of that same leg and break it clean off as the thing falls to the ground and turns to white pla like white bone-like material with red and green speckles all over it. All the fur and fleshy bits gone. And this thing does not look like it's falling over, but it does look like it's severely hurt. Oh. Anything else for you, Shen? Um. I'm gonna back up 10 feet. No, I can't do that. Never mind. I don't want to do that. I lied. Nope. Don't want to do that. Um. All right. No, nah, that's it then. I don't have anything else. All right. So, at this point, a. Let's see here. A crossbow bolt comes flying from a rooftop and hits the big uh, reindeer in the center of its head. And you see it pierce and it's Stay. The bolt just kind of stays there in the center of its head, but the thing does not fall over. It does not die. But you also know that that crossbow bolt came from somewhere pretty far away, probably a rooftop, just based off of the trajectory. And that'll bring us up to Dasher. All right. Dasher is going to get one attack on Orpheus with advantage. 
because pack tactics. 23. I'd hit. Right. Dasher opens up its mouth and clamps down with a Ferengal like jaw as the thing just kind of unhinges and clamps down on your arm, dealing nine points of piercing damage as you feel cold bite into your arm and it stings like similar to when alcohol is poured onto a wound. Oh. As you also take an additional 14 cold damage. Oh. Okay. Alright. So that was Dasher. Now Dancer! Is also going to get an attack on Orpheus. That'll be a 12. That does not hit. Alright. Now on to Prancer. Prancer is going to attack Brigzekiel. And... 18? Uh, no, it does not hit. All right. All right, now on to Vixen, who's also going to attack Break Ezekiel. Uh, 20. That does hit. Mm-hmm. All right. So you take 15 points of piercing damage uh, as... I'm, Once again, I'm good. Jaw. Good. I'm going to use shield as a reaction to add five to my AC to make that uh, 24 for my AC total. Okay. Uh, since I'm getting hit with a. Uh, as a reaction. Yep, so that means that it misses instead. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. All right, now on to Comet, who is going to use his action to circle around. Um, Break Ezekiel, you'll get an attack of opportunity as he's trying to circle everyone else behind you. So you get an attack of opportunity on Comet. All right. Uh, what I'm going to do there is attack... Uh, is he within range of my, uh, is he within 20 feet of my, uh, Deadly Menorah? Um, yeah, so you can, you can hit him with a Deadly Menorah, yeah. Okay. I'll attack with that. Alright. And that's a dirty 20. That'll hit. Alright, and for damage, uh, that's a 7 total. And then I get two attacks per action. Does that mean I get to go again? Yes. For an opportunity attack? Yeah. All right. So then once again with the Deadly Menorah, mm -hmm. uh, that's an 18 total. That'll hit as well. All right. And for damage, that's a nine. All right. So you, you mm -hmm. all see as the wrapping paper comes flying off of this golden nine point pole arm where each end of it has a small flame flickering from it as Brexekiel unleashes deadly menorah on Comet. Alright, and he looks the uh, comet looks like he just took the beating of a lifetime from that one from that from that flurry of attacks. So on to Cupid, who is doing the same thing but the other side. So Orpheus, you'll get an attack of opportunity. Sounds good. Um... Uh, 
Um, I'm gonna attack it with my great axe. Um. Oh, I can do math. Fuck. Uh. Seventeen to hit. That'll hit. Yeah. Alright. Ha! That's a twelve plus a five for seventeen points of damage. Alright, got it. Um. I think that's all I do. I think that's how this works. Okay. Now on to Donner, who is going to circle around the Brigzekiel side, but you only get one attack of opportunity per initiative, so he passes by. And um, Blitzen does the same thing on Orpheus' side to split up. So, but you already had your attack of opportunity. So, Igneus, you're up. Um. You are still plastered drunk, and you're not entirely sure if this is actually happening or not. Yeah, I figured as much. But it does look like a good time for a fight. Oh, absolutely. Um... From where I'm sitting, I want mm -hmm. to use my longbow and just kind of fire into the general direction of where everybody is and hope that I hit something right. waiting to backseat me. Okay, I would like you to roll an attack with disadvantage, please. Absolutely. Thirteen. Okay. <clears throat> Roll damage, please. Okay. <clears throat> so, an arrow comes whizzing out of your bow and straight down on one of the reindeer. Um, you're not really able to make out which reindeer it is, but for those of you listening at home, that's five damage to common. Now, anything else with your turn, Ignatius? Nope, that's it. All right, Tony, you're up. Awesome. How far am I from my dad and how far am I from... Uh, <clears throat> so you are, right now, you are about four feet, four or five feet behind your dad, but you have a clear line of sight to all the mayhem that's going on with the reindeer. You can okay, also sure. see, because of your short stature, you can also see up on the, um, on the porch of the chocolatier, there is um, a stack of potato sacks that would be give you a good vantage point as well. Hmm. Uh, I look briefly to my dad. What is his expression? What is he looking like right now? Like, what is his overall disposition? It's a good question. What is your disposition, Ikmanis? I've essentially put myself between Tony and the nearest threat. Um, and I have um, my fancy bonk stick. <laughs> um, and um, essentially, essentially puppy guarding my son from anything that might come at him. Expression wise, hmm. he probably just looks very dead and slightly frightened. Very what? And slightly frightened? This part broke up. Uh, you know, I don't actually remember. Yeah, <laughs> it left Sorry. my head right after I said it. <laughs> no worries. Internet issues. Sorry. Um, okay, so then how close is the nearest reindeer? Uh, currently about... 
20 feet away from you and coming from the side. Okay. Do I smell anything peculiar about them? Like, is there mint on the air or anything? Do they vaguely um, resemble candy? Um, More you can tell the, 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 the stuff that's coming from inside them resembles candy. Okay, is there any metal on them still? Uh, no. It doesn't look like it. Alright, um... Hmm... Uh, tell you what, screw it. Um, can I use Earth Tremor? Sure. Sweet. So let's see. Go ahead and uh, describe, it, describe, it. describe to me what happens. Okay, so to start with, um, kind of looks my dad and then to these reindeer being all crazy like. Um, and the fact primarily that they're trying to circle around. And, um, <laughs> I will pull out bagpipes and uh, just the nifty handy little mic that I have on hand and uh, stomp my foot just to start, you know, like as if I were going into a beat and uh, I'll cast Earth Tremor for first level and that's a dex 17 and basically it's just earthquake all of a sudden starts to happen um, basically it's uh, with about I'm sorry, let me rephrase. I will advance about 10 feet so that they are within 10 feet of me and then meet this. So basically it makes a, make a deck save throw of 17 um, or be knocked prone and take 1 to 6 damage. And then if it's loose okay. earth or prone, then it's basically a difficult terrain. What's up? So Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Donner and Blitzen all failed. Okay. As far as the glowy red one, he yeah. succeeded. Okay. So the rest uh, become well acquainted with the ground temporarily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, on the 1d6. We are looking at <laughs> a glorious two damage. Maybe a Ooh. mild tickle sensation. Ooh. Dad, I think they ate Santa. I think you're right. Please stay close to me. What do we do? That they they ate Santa. Can they can they do that? Is that Santa? That can't be Santa. That's not real, right? Yeah, it's. Rob. You know what? We'll figure that out later. Let's let's figure that part out later, bud. Dad, they're hurting people. I don't like it. Gonna stop them. Don't worry. Everything everything's gonna be just fine. Everything in fact was not going to be just fine. <laughs> And that'll bring us up, unless uh, that'll be the end of your turn, Tony. Yep, we're good. All right. So now it's Rudolph's turn. So <clears throat> Rudolph charges past, um, charges past Orpheus. Orpheus, you did not get an attack opportunity as you've already used that. Damn. Um, and takes one bite at um. Here. Yeah, one. Be one bite at Ikmanis. Rude. A 25? Yeah, hits. Um, as he sinks 
his teeth into you, you'll take another, you'll take eight piercing damage. And I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Wow. That was not that one. There we go. Blue. Uh, 17 on the saving throw. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Alright, and then he makes a second attack with his hoof, which will be a 12. That doesn't hit. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. And now it's your turn, Ikmanis. Oh boy. Hold on. There. I'm still learning how to use all kinds of fun cleric things. Um. Yes. Considering the situation, I will uh, smack it across the nose with my fancy bonk stick. All right. Sweet. All the hit. No, no. Uh, nat twenty. Ah, uh -huh. roll percentage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Of course it does, I don't have it, I don't have it. Ooh, that one. Yep. Make, sure, make, sure you, make sure you all remember what your magic items do, because I am not looking, therefore I cannot remind you. Um, it just says you can be used as a magic weapon. I'm not sure what that does when you're smacking something and not using the direct effect. It just means but that its, weapon, its weapon's attacks count as magical for the purpose of overcoming resistances. Okay. Okay, and someone remind me because I forgot how to use percentiles. The double digit is first or second? The double digit is first. Sixteen. Okay. At least so, I think. Yeah. That, that'll be max damage. What's the max damage you could normally roll? Okay. What is this? It is. Yes, two options. Oh, that's probably for you. Oh. You don't have you don't have to roll damage. It's max damage. So what's the damage die? I was trying not to, and now it's <laughs> the whole thing. Just I was trying to look, and it vanished on me. Now it's loading. <laughs> I have to do everything on my phone. It's like, I, that's not what I wanted to do, I just wanted details, and then... And now it's snowing on my screen. Yay. You're welcome for that, brother. Yeah, yeah, it's making it take longer to load. So, yeah, <laughs> all that. But, okay. Now show me damage you do, things, and thank you. Uh, of course, now you don't show me. Let me here. Aha, it says 1d6 plus 1. Alright, so that'll be 7. Six. That means 7 damage max, because you, if you roll a d6, you got 6, that'd be 7 max damage. Okay, oh, that's the idea. There we go, okay. <clears throat> Alright. And that brings us up to... Unless, unless you're going to do anything else with your turn, pick monies. Uh... I don't think... I can... Um... When... Uh, when Tony moved, how far away from me did he go? Um... Uh, I don't know, if Tony, how far did you move? 
only 10 feet ahead. Mm -hmm. Basically, she's to close the 10 foot distance between myself and the reindeer. And you've he been roughly here. five feet me, so now he's five feet in front of me, essentially. Mm -hmm. Or... Yeah. 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 Similarly. Mm hmm Oh. Uh, no. Wink. I don't think I can do anything else. <laughs> That's a <for> move. <laughs> yeah. So, Mr. French. You get a... You get a loud knock on your door as you're trying to put your earplugs ear in. I am going to finish putting in my earplugs. Go ahead and pick up my mouse and put them in my little pocket. And then I'm going to slowly make my way to the door. Wondering <laughs> who the heck marched all the way up the mountain to knock on my door. So you get all the way to the door, open the door, and there is a quiver of arrows, six arrows in them, sitting there on your doorstep. As you are looking at those, you can also see what looks to be a fight getting ready to start with some wild creatures that you can barely make out are not humans down in the village. Do I see the sleigh? You do. Oh boy, we are finally starting a revolt against Santa. I am going to grab... Huh? And as you grab that up, that'll be the end of your turn. Yep. And that brings us back up to Break Ezekiel. All right, uh, so where's uh, uh, Big Rudolph compared to me now? Rudolph is now about 10 feet behind you. All right, uh, just a second here. So I want to enter my rage. Okay. Is that something I can do? <laughs> uh, so... Then I'm going to uh, move towards Rudolph there to attack with my menorah. Okay. All right. And then, uh, let's see here. So that's uh, 28. All right, that'll hit. Score. And then I'm also going to discharge the weapon. Uh, uh, that's attached to it, the spell. What's it called? Mm -hmm. Sacred Flame. Is that how that works? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So I'll roll for that as well? Yes. That's a dex 12. All right. I got that. See here. That is a failure. Okay. So that's going to be uh, one more radiant damage. Okay. All right, so then I get two uh, actions per attack. So that's going to be another uh, Deadly Menorah. Mm-hmm. Oof, that was a nat one. Oh, no, sorry, that's a seven. Ha, huh? my bad. So that's 16 total. That'll hit. Uh, all right. And then uh, damage is going to be a 10. And then do I get to discharge? Uh, no uh, need. Okay. Um, so, as you bring down Deadly Menorah, hit it with the Sacred Flame, and then bring Deadly Menorah across again, you notice that as you make contact, the Rudolph erupts into sparkles, as you can see a star appear in sparkles above where the reindeer had once stood. And Rudolph's now dead. Yay. Anything else to your turn, Blake Sikyo? Um, do I have any movement left? You do. 
You have 20 feet. 20 feet. All right. And then where are the rest of the reindeer? So you have two of them are headed over towards um, towards the backside of the party nearest you. You have the group mm-hmm. that is in front of you. And then you have, oh, sorry, behind you now. And then you have the two on the far side that are headed around Orpheus. Okay. Orpheus has been taking a beating right and been by himself, so let me go join yeah. Orpheus, make an advancement that way. Uh, do I get close enough to touch Orpheus? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I'll give them bolstering magic. They can roll a d3 with uh, attack roll ability check. A d3? Yeah. (laughs) Sure. All right. I think that's it for me. All right. Orpheus, you're up. A d3? Yeah. I know you have one. I don't know where it is. (laughs) It's all I can do. Yeah, I just have to find it. Um, okay, so... It's a nice pat on the back, like, come on, you got it. Which is really, really funny, because you're, what, like, nine feet tall? Right, I'm like, <laughs> Orpheus is four. Orpheus is four, too. It's probably more like a pat on the head. Just pat, pat. Where the fuck is it? Let's do it. Where did it go? I'm making my dick my off the dice. Um... How many of them are around me? There it is. Uh, there are two on your right, and there are um, four in your on your front, and then there are two furthest left of you. All right. How many of them are within five feet of me? Uh, there, within five feet, there are five foot like diameter or five foot radius. Five foot radius. Um, six of them. How many of them are within ten foot radius of me? Uh, all eight. Okay. How many friendlies are within a ten foot radius of me? Who do you consider to be a friendly? Um, the people who aren't actively trying to kill me right now. Uh, one, two, two, three. All right, fuck it. Um, I'm casting Shatter at second level. Alright. Um, that is a con save of 16, and anyone within 10, anyone within a 10 foot radius of me has to make it. Okay. Con saves. Um, and as that happens, I will roll damage, which means I have to pull out more dice. Um, I rolled a 17 for that one. Okay, that's a pass, which means you only take half damage. I need eight. Uh, nice. What's the save, DC? Uh, 16. Only Dancer and Prancer made this safe. Alright, so who were the other two non people attacking me in that? Because uh, it should was be, Brixie- should be Break Ezekiel, Tony, and Ikmanis. Alright, so you two also have to make a con save of six. Um nineteen. Perfect. Come back. No, that's not what I wanted. That's also not what I wanted. Okay, fine. I won't do it that way. Whoa. Uh, dirty 20. All right. So everyone, um, the total damage was 12. Um, and those of you who saved it only take half.
Alright. And is that the end of your turn? Um, I think that's all I can do, yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I'm at 69. Nice. <laughs> Thank nice. you. Alright, so as you all are starting to slowly get surrounded, More and more time goes by to go. Okay. A spell comes flying overhead. So, break Ezekiel and, um, break Ezekiel and Orpheus, I need you two to make constitution saving throws. Okay. Sorry, dex, not con. Aw, oh, damn, okay. That's not as, that's not as fun. I got a 17. I got a 7, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, you su- you succeeded, Orpheus. Okay. Rick, Zeke, you, f- you failed. Um... Oh no. <laughs> Shucks. And Let's see here we at. All right. So everyone should take everyone um, who failed should take sixteen damage. Everyone who succeeded should take eight. Nah. As a mm. burst of a burst of wind pushes all of the reindeer back away from you guys, and um, for Brigzikiel and or- Orpheus, you two get pushed towards the group. Um, I'd like to use my stone's endurance as a reaction to reduce the damage dealt by 1d12 plus 3. Okay. Uh, if I could, please, and thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's not it. Oops. That's it. Is that a d12? Yes. All right, so it's reduced the damage by uh, 9 total. So I'll okay. take 7. Okay. okay. All right. And now Dasher is going to use his action to close the distance all the way back to you after being pushed back 60 feet. So is Dancer. Also prone. Huh? They all failed to save against my spell as well, right? Prone yes. So they were, okay. They're all still prone. So they're using okay. their action to get back up and get back over it, so there's not anything Sorry. else that they're doing. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, and Blitzen all get 
push back and start collectively working their way back towards you all. Igneous, you're up. I assume I'm still inebriated and sitting on a bed. Oh. You are. Nope. So, what do you do? Yeah, I'm, I'm still just going to keep a distance on this one and just use my long bow. Alright. Roll an attack with disadvantage. No fun. Eleven. Okay. Um, let's see here. Tony, Ichmanis, Orpheus, and Brixekiel, I need you all to make dexterity saving throws. Uh, what kind was it? Deck save? Mm-hmm. Uh, nat 20 for 22. Oh. Uh, oh. Quick question, is this something that I can see? I have advantage of something I can see. No, on. no, you can't see it. Okay, so no damage, got it. Uh, that's 17 for me. Okay, did anyone score less than an 11? Yes, I did. I finally figured out how to do it on the app. Nice. It failed me, but I figured it out. (laughs) So, you take an arrow right into your shoulder. (laughs) No idea where it came from. Igneous, roll damage. (laughs) I rolled an 11. Take 11 inches. I was at 69 now. As an arrow comes flying out of nowhere and hits probably the only person besides the ranger that Ignatius wanted to hit. <laughs> That's what you get. All right. Yes, for raising your son. Tony, you're up. That you abandoned. Stealing? Don't buy some. Uh, considering something. Would legend lore work on these guys at all? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? You've yeah, never seen them before. You, you've never se- you've never seen them before or heard about them before. So you don't know okay. if that it would help or not. It is a fifth level spell. So it's the best thing I've got. I'll throw that at it. All right, you gonna hit with the legend lore? Yes. Try to learn what I can. All right. So it looks like from what you gather magically within the stores of knowledge, what you're seeing is a form of disease that is hellish in nature that causes ravenous hunger in creatures while also slowly turning the calcium within their body into sugar. Okay. Um, I assume zombies are a thing in this universe. (laughs) They are. They are. Dad, I I think... The, the reindeer are zombies or something. They're they're sugar and they eat things. They're hungry. I kind of figured. Yep. His his voice is very tight with with pain as he's trying to draw very little attention to the arrow. In Dad, can we melt them or something? I don't know what to do. They yes. I. Tony, I was trying to yeah. get to fire. Fire is what's going to kill him quickly. 
<laughs> Dang. Dad, do, do you have anything that can like burn them or something? I, I think they're sugar, they'll, they'll melt. I think that's what we need to do is melt them or something. I'm gonna back up to my dad. I am a tiny 13 year old with the voice of, well, we won't talk about that. <laughs> I don't have fire, um, but I can do some damage. Do you have a torch or something? I, I can't start fires, but I can do stuff with them, like fireworks. You know, for, like, my songs. Uh, no momento. I don't know what's in my inventory. Let me find out. Me too, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I have tinderbox and a torch. They're not lit, but maybe there's fire around us. I don't know. They seem pretty cool to me. Might be a little bit. <laughs> Um, can I kind of pick up, like, the weird gift box that I also had blown to my feet earlier that I picked up, I guess, or yeah. whatever else? Yeah. Cool. Yep. Yep, and um, you, as you kind of get an eye on that, you can see that it's ammunition for that project you've been working on in the basement. Oh, can I tell if it's explosive? Yep. Encouraging my son. Everyone's encouraging my son to buy it. Yeah. Dad, I look. Well, this is gonna sound really weird, but I need you to trust me, okay? There's, uh, I, I gotta run home for you just a moment. All right, I'll, I'll be right back. Thank you. And I'm gonna sprint home to the basement and get that because I assume we're still fairly fucking close to the tree farm. Yeah, I'm getting that cannon. All right. So you sprint back home, and that'll you you get to the door at the end of your turn. All right, if <laughs> money's up. Oh, joy. And I just discovered I do, in fact, have fire. Well, flame-like radiance, so not technically, but kind of, sort of. <laughs> la, 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 go back. Ooh, there we go. If it's, go. Any, if it's any help to you, Comet and Cupid are the most obviously injured out of everyone, out of all the reindeer. Okay, um, which ones are closest to me? Uh, closest to you would be Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, and Vixen. Okay. And which ones you said were already Common damaged? Common and Cupid are the most damaged of everyone. Okay. Boy, where am I going with this? Uh, I will use uh, Guiding Bolt um, okay. on either Comet or Cupid, whichever one's essentially closer to me. <laughs> Ranged attack spell roll is the same as just a regular, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I should keep losing my shit. Seventeen. Dead. Right. Okay. Yep. Got it. Yeah. Beauty. Um, five. C six. That was a hit, yes? Correct. Am I getting them? No. Ow. Yeah. 
22. All right, that'll hit as well. Did I lose you guys? Comet or Cupid, whichever one was closer to me. All right, let me Comet. Okay. And then you said I hit, and then I did uh, 22. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. And Comet is barely standing, as all you can see now is what looks like peppermint bark for bones. That's nice. Um, and then on the next attack roll made against that target, before the end of my next turn, uh, has advantage on that one. All right. So that'll bring us up to Mr. French. So, Mr. Hello. French, you are coming down the mountain and see all this stuff going on. As things currently sit, you're about 300 feet away. Uh, that is fine. As I'm running down, I'm trying to find anything that might be laying down on the ground, like a broken uh, chunk of wood or anything that I could use as a sled to pick up my pace. Um... You actually see what looks to be, um, <clears throat> if I was to say, a uh, the hollowed out re wreckage of a of a, a rowboat, mm -hmm. and I mean, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of trash on your mountain. It just kind of ends up there. Okay, and I do just want to state that before I started running down the mountain, I would have grabbed up all of my equipment. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'm going to head on over, uh, aim it down the mountain as best as I can. Um, you said it was completely detached, so I don't have to like break it off or anything, correct? Yeah, it's, it's completely detached. Okay, so yeah, I'm just going to aim it down the mountain, hop on with my little mouse in my pocket and I'm going to try to pick up as much speed as I can because I don't want to miss this fight with the old jolly bastard. Yep. Alright, so you reach the bottom of the mountain by the end of your turn and you are currently only about 100 feet away when your next turn picks back up. Break Ezekiel. Perfect. You're up. Alright. So, uh, when I went, uh, Rage, I think I should have actually, it would have triggered my Wild Surge. Uh, so I rolled the Wild Magic Table to determine the magical effect. Mm -hmm. Uh, so that's a D8, so that should have been done, my bad. So that roll is number 8. So on the table, effect 8 is... A bolt of light shoots from your chest. Another creature of your choice so you can see within 30 feet. You must exceed a constitution saving throw or take 1d6 radiant damage and be blinded until the start of your next turn. 
Uh, All so, right, so who are you gonna mm-hmm. choose? Uh, did I know? Did I see that and understand it about uh, Common and Cupid being uh, near the end there? Yes. Okay, right. And so the one that already got attacked, I would double down on that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Roll a D6. Right, so. Actually, don't even bother rolling a D6. The only he only has one hit point left. <laughs> So, <laughs> as okay. the bolt of light just bursts out, the peppermint bark just goes scattering everywhere as Comet is no more. There we go. So that was uh, the wild surge that should have just automatically triggered. Now yep. for my actual turn. Uh, so the other one just left, uh, what's, what's its name, sorry? Uh, the other one that's weakened is uh, Cupid. Cupid, okay. And so for Cupid there, did I hear the part about them being vulnerable to fire? Yes, that was made clear. Okay, sure. So let me hit that sucker uh, with a fire bolt. Okay. Uh, so that's a dirty 20. That'll hit. Score. And then uh, for the damage, that's a 10. Alright, and as you hurl a molt of fire at Cupid, mm-hmm. the fire just hits and candy just melts into a puddle of of just pure sugar in the snow. As Cupid is no more. Score. Uh, I want to take my action surge? Can I do that second additional action? Yes, yes, but you can't cast another spell. Score. I haven't used my movement or my uh, melee yet. Okay. So, let me do my action surge, and then uh, which uh, enemy combatants are within range? Um, your enemy combatants are within range are um, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, and Vixen. Uh, any of them, like, closer to a comrade? Uh, Dasher is close to, uh, Ichmanis. Okay, let me go that way, so, towards Dasher, and, uh, am I within, uh, five-foot melee range for the menorah? Yeah. Score. So let's do that, and that's two attacks per action. So, first one's a 21. Oh, that'll hit. Can you hear me? Oh, sorry. Thank you. And then the damage is the six, but I also want to trigger its charge. Okay. Uh, right. So I'll do that and change pages. So for Sacred Flame, that's a dex 12. And then it does, it'll do seven damage. That's a failure. Okay. For seven damage, and that's fire damage, right? Uh, no, sorry, that's not a roll. I'm sorry, it's radiant. Ignore the radiant. Three. Okay. Right. Sorry, I accidentally pressed it again. Okay, so that was my first attack, and I have my second attack, right? Yep. So yep. All right. So another uh, deadly menorah. Uh, so that's going to be a thirteen. That'll hit. There you go. That damage piercing is going to be 10. And then, can I trigger another charge on it? Yeah, go ahead. Let's go do that. And change pages. So for Sacred Flame, uh, the damage would be 5 Radiant for the next 12 save. Okay. So you bring them down. You hurl them out of fire. Action Surge Dash. The two strikes on Dasher and the Sacred Flame bursting up with every strike as you bring Dasher down from looking relatively healthy to knocking on Death's door within the span of six seconds. Sounds about right, I'll take it. (laughs) And that'll bring us to Orpheus. All right. How many people, um, not people, that's not the right question. How many of these reindeers are within? 
within melee range. range. Melee range. Five melee feet. Range. Um, so Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, and Vixen. Got it. Perfect. Um, I'm going to rage. Okay. Um, and then I keep forgetting that I have I have two attack. <laughs> um, so um, whichever one is closest to me, I'm just going to swing at them first. That'll be that'll be to you. That'll be dancer. All right. So roll to hit. That is a fifteen to hit. That'll hit. All right. Ten plus five plus two. Seventeen points of damage. Got it. Um, and then I'm gonna use my second attack to attack the same one. All right. Um. Uh, that's a 25 to hit. Got it. That'll hit. Alright. That is... 14 points of damage. 14 points of damage. Got it. Um. I think that's all I can do. Um, yeah, because I can't. Yeah. Can I? Can I use two weapon fighting my, that bonus action? Yeah. Fuck it. Okay, let's do it. I'm gonna swing again. This time with my hand axe. Okay. For another twenty-five to hit. That'll hit. Damage. All right. Six five. Uh, twelve points. Got it. All right, and that's all I can do. And now. Dancer has been brought from looking relatively healthy to knocking on death's door within the span of Fuck you, you candy-coated piece of shit. <laughs> As another crossbow bolt comes whirring out of nowhere. And strikes Dasher in the head. For... Fifteen points of damage as crossbow bolt hits the center of Dasher's head and Dasher is starting to stumble and fall apart, but is not fully dead yet. And Dasher's up now. Dasher is going to get an attack. at Brexikio. Nine. But with pack tactics, and Sierra still flanked. That's also a nine. Uh, what type of damage is it? No, it, will, it won't even hit. He will a nine to hit. Oh. Oh. All right, so, oh. yeah. yeah. So now, now we're on to Dancer, who is going to take an attack at Orpheus. 15. Uh, Tactics means 22. That hits. What kind of damage? It's uh, piercing. I have resist. Yep, so you take half damage. Sounds good. So, instead of 15, take 7. Alright. Alright. Like and then take... 9 cold damage. As the cold feeling of alcohol inside your bloodstream kind of burns into cold, poisonous type feeling. Me. Uh, Prancer is going to be making an attack at Ekmanis. 
for, for, for an eight, no pack tactics. Because he's not within five feet. Um, oh. Of an enemy, of an ally. And then Tony. Yeah. You can see that one of the wolves has bre- broke off from the pack and is trying to chase you down. Oh, I mean, that's one, not one of the reindeer. One of, one of the reindeer. My bad. One of the reindeers broke off from the from the sleigh and is trying to chase you down. Well, that's spooky. Yep. My baby. And the, then I have an AC of twelve. <laughs> Donner um, and Blitzen are both moving towards you, Ignaeus. The and fuck they are. Ignaeus, that brings up to you. Uh, Donner and Blitzen are within 15 feet of you now as they're heading towards you. In the interest of not wasting any more arrows, I think I'm going to use the whip that I have on my belt to attack one of them. I don't care which one you pick. You pick. I don't want to pick. They both do. I don't know. You gotta pick. You gotta pick. I don't pick for you. Okay, which one looks like it's hurting the most? So, as far as... Uh, Donner and Blitzen, they look pretty equivalent. Okay, Blitzen, because it's a funny name, I love it. <laughs> Alright. Am I Don't still rolling it with advantage? No, not with a, not with a, not with a melee weapon. With bow, yes. Cool. Um, 17. You're, you're used to using your whip while drunk. Oh. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> 17! Yeah, 17. Damage? I, I hadn't got there yet. Um... 8. Alright. And anything else for your turn? Um, no, that's it. Okay. Tony. You're in, ready with terrible ideas. Let's go. So Vixen is coming up close behind you and is about 15 feet behind you as you make got, got your way all the way to the door. Okay, so random question. Um, do we have ration packs and such? Actually, yeah. Your, your, your dad, your dad's a bit of a pack rat, and so he likes to prep for just in case you guys decide to go on a wilderness hike. So, from what I understand, this puppy needs calcium and is very hungry, like capital V, very. Mm-hmm. At this point, it looks like a wolf, not some kind of undead monstrosity. Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, against my better judgment, and because puppy, um, I'm going to very tentatively take my pack off and get my rations out of it, like, all that I have, which is basically just one big pack. Um, Mm -hmm. and I'm going to kneel on the ground and set it down for me. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, outstretch both hands back away from it. What's in your ration pack? Uh, basically, like, fruits, vegetables, and meat dried. All of the above, including, like, for instance, probably citrus, which would actually be high in in this case. Um, as would anything, like, along the lines of cruciferous vegetables, such as broccoli, is the most common. Mm -hmm. Um, broccoli and cauliflower, both. Also used commonly as alternative to flour. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So, as you kind of do that, it takes a minute and starts gnawing its way through your ration. Okay. Can I roll an animal handling check on this? Yeah, certainly. Cool. 
course I'd roll low. A 12. <laughs> Um, you're fairly certain it's worked, um, but you don't, not really sure how much longer it's going to work. As the way it's eating, okay. you're fairly certain that its hunger is not going to be sated. Is it sick, cursed, undead, irredeemable? Is there any gist that I have on this right now? Like, it's acting a w like the same way that you would previously have seen when on your nature hikes with your dad. The, the different kinds of animals that get infected by something and start acting irrationally. Okay, my son, get the house. Please, I understand. I understand it's a puppy, but please get in the house. I'm aware it is sick, but you can't cure rabies. Get in the house. Dad, I think they're sick. It's not rabies. They need, they need calcium or something. Can, can you do something? Maybe, but first, please get in the house before it gets the calcium from you. But, Dad, they, I, they're the reindeer. I understand. I understand. I promise you, but your life is, is more important to me than the reindeer right now. Please get in the house. I'm going to put all of my being into trying to put out, like, Anything I have left in my pack of food, I'll put down my entire goddamn pack. <laughs> Let me know when to roll an animal hand when you. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so you throw that out, and that'll be the end of your turn. All right. All right. <clears throat> Ick, Manis, you're up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. Oh boy, okay, um, can I tell at all if this is something that could be cured? Like, am, am I able to gauge whether or not it's breakable, what's happening to them? It, from what you can gather so far, even if it were to be cured, they wouldn't be the same. You can go ahead and make me a medicine check to gather more information. Oh. No, that's not what I want. Oh. Twelve. Very helpful. Okay. Um. You're fairly certain it's some kind of disease or parasite. And it looks like it was passed to the eight reindeer by the one that was glowing red. You're also starting to feel really warm, and you have a really dry mouth. Mmm. That's lovely. And for some reason, a slice of cheese and a cup of warm milk sounds really good right now. <laughs> That's so specific and disturbing. Oh, let me read this again, sorry. Um... Uh, well... Nothing comes first. So I am... going to cast Guiding Bolt on the one that's going after Tony. Okay. Eighteen. Uh, I can do it. Twenty-four. Bleh. Okay. If I'm doing that accurately. Never sure I am. To hit. That'll hit. Yay! Oh, 
Uh, that's at now fourth level. Okay. For for funsies. Now, if I have enough dice. So many dice. Twenty-seven. All right. As you land a solid hit with the guiding bolt, as your son is trying to figure out how to help this poor creature, the thing gets incinerated from behind its back as Tony gets coated in candied dust. Well, that's traumatizing. (laughs) And Mr. French, you're up. As you come up to the scene, and it's about 100 feet away, but you can actually see what's going on now, pretty much. Okay. Um, do I see the reindeer attacking the poor, innocent people of this village? You do. And you also see that the sleigh is the one that brought these reindeer in. And it looks like Santa's already been taken care of. Perfect. I am going to plow this makeshift sled right into the side of one of these reindeer. Or at least attempt to. Okay. I would like you to make me an acrobatics check, please. Dun, dun, dun. Twenty-three. So you hit a nice little snowbank and get a kick off of the thing and send the makeshift sled flying into Dasher. And you roll me a D4 for the improvised weapon. That's a four. The sled comes down at just the right angle and you see Dasher's head gets separated from the neck as you land in the middle of everybody else as Dasher drops dead. (laughs) Oops. And you still have your action. That was all your movement. Yes, I am then going to uh, take my bow off of my back. Uh, ready one of my own arrows, because I do not know what the heck these jolly green looking thingies do. Okay. And I am going to fire at yet another reindeer. Okay, so you have um, the closest one to you would be Dancer, who is pretty badly wounded. Other than that, you can see um, there is Donner and Blitzen, who are still up, as well as Prancer, who is the least injured. Uh, might as well take down the most injured first. So, whichever okay. one that was. Answer. <clears throat> yes. All right, roll to hit. <clears throat> Twenty-one. That'll hit. Eats. That'll be ten damage. Okay. <clears throat> it looks and pretty then... bang it looks pretty banged up as you send an arrow flying through its eye socket, but it is still standing. Awesome. Um quick question on that. Was anybody else nearby it at the time? Uh, yeah. Um Orpheus Within... Orpheus is nearby, a stranger from not from this town that you don't recognize. Um, okay. You can also see Break Ezekiel next to it, the guy who works at the bank, the nine foot tall guy. Mm-hmm. The only other one, that, the only other one that seems to have an equal amount of dislike for the holidays as you do. 
Okay, uh, because of a friendly being, well, within five feet, correct? Correct. Would that be considered a sneak attack? That is. I do sneak attack damage. Seventeen more damage. Okay. As you drop Dancer with a sneak attack arrow straight to the eye socket, out to the back of the head, and the thing just crumbles into that mint bar. Beautiful. And then I will use a bonus action to try to hide. Okay. Alright, uh, break sequel, you're up. Alright, I think I goofed up a bit because I, I cast uh, the cantrip while in the rage. I can't do that. So I'm not sure if my rage would end or where I'm at. Yeah, your, 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 range and your rage ended when you cast the cantrip. Sure. Uh, thank you. So where is the closest uh, enemy combatant now? Um, now would be Prancer, who is also the, the still healthiest, and he is about mm-hmm. 20 feet away from you, closest to Ikmanil. Okay, and can I tell that one of the other ones is weaker? Uh, yeah, you can tell that um, Blitzen, who is coming up on um, Igneus, is the weakest of them all, but Blitzen is about 35 feet away. Sure, 35 feet for Blitzen, sure. All right, so um, what I would like to do here, if I can do this in the right combination, the rage is a bonus action. So I would attack first. So, uh, let me make my movement towards Blitzen then, uh, to try to get into melee range. Okay. Um, and then attack with the Deadly Venora. Okay. And then that would be uh, 25 to hit. Alright, that'll hit. Or uh, I do want to extend the use of the Sacred Flame as well, as you know. Uh, so it's just, uh, for the damage on the menorah, that would be a 9 piercing. And then for Sacred Flame, that's a dex 12. Okay. The damage would be 4 if it hits. Uh, yep, that hits. Got it. Four. <clears throat> so, I believe that was one attack, so I get two attacks for action, correct? Mm-hmm. All right. So let me go again with the Deadly Venora. Okay. This time there was a 13. That'll hit. Okay, score. Uh, that's uh, 10 piercing damage. Okay. And I will expend the use of the Sacred Flame again. Uh-huh. Dex 12 for uh, W3 Radiant if you failed the Dex 12. I did, so. Got that. Alright. And then. Now would be the correct time as a bonus action to do rage. Yes. Four. Let me do the rage. And then when I enter my rage, I roll the wild magic table to determine the magical effect produced. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. I think I'm doing this right th- this time. So my D8 roll. That's a four on that table. 
infuse uh, magic into the weapon. Love it. Until my rage ends, the magic type changes to force. And it gets a light and throwing properties. 20, 60 feet. It appears in my hand. Okay, fine. Anyways, that's my wild surge as well. All right. I think that's it for me. Okay. All right, Ignatius. Uh, sorry, not Ignatius. Uh, Orpheus, you're up. Alrighty. Um, how many of them are still alive? Uh, there is Prancer and Donner and Blitzen. All right. Which one is closest to me? Prancer, and is also the healthiest of them all. We're just gonna use all three of the attacks I can do on that. Because okay. I'm still raging. <laughs> um, Go for it. That is... Oh, I can do math. Fuck. 18 to hit. That'll hit. Alright. Oh, Lord. Uh, 18 points of damage on that one. Okay, got it. Uh, I swing again with my Great Axe for my second attack. That's right. 16 to hit. That'll hit. Um, 16 points of damage on that one. Got it. And then my I use bonus uh, bonus actions uh, the two weapon fighting for my hand axe for my third attack. Um, that is another. That's a 15. All right. So you, in an utter rage, after just trying to you know soak your feet, and kick back and relax, and just take some time after traveling on the road. I finally had it with these damn reindeer coming in and ruining your day. I'm so, trying to have a nice fucking day in these candy-coated bastards. You cut down into little pieces, looking like a tray of Christmas crack over here. This ring. Yes. So, with that bonus action, the the, um, the two weapon fight, can I close mm -hmm. the gap to one of the other ones and attack it? Uh, because I no. I have no. He's too oh. far away. He's thirty five feet. I have forty feet of movement. Oh, then yeah. Fuck yeah, we're doing that. And I'm going after this. I'm going after that one with my hand axe. Then uh, so that is that'll be Donner. All right. Oh, I can do math. Uh, twenty five to hit. That'll hit. That was the wrong damage die. Ah! Ugh. Eight points of damage. Got it. All right, that's the end of your turn? Yeah, yes. All right. Let's see here. Another spell comes firing off from the uh, the roof. <laughs> As Blitzen gets hit with a bolt of sickly silverish white energy that just completely engulfs it in ice. And... All right, that'll bring us to Blitzen, who is gonna attack Igneus. That'll be a 19 to hit, Ignatius. Ugh. Okay. So you right. hit. So that'll be 12 piercing damage Ugh. and 10 cold oh, damage. Shit. Jesus Christ! You tell your spicy ice witch to go the fuck away. Alright, and Igneus, that brings us to your turn. 
Do I recognize any of, of this magic happening? Oh yeah, you recognize that magic. Okay. Of course I do. Lovely. I think it's just gonna be a lovely day. It's a lovely mm. day. Dad, do you do you know something that's going on? Elf. Uh I know somebody who's going on. Ignatius, you're yeah. I know that. <laughs> is 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 Blitzen officially like dead dead or no? Uh Blitzen is not dead dead. Blitzen's the only one left alive. Oh cool. I'm gonna attack him with a whip. Alright. Okay. Roll hit. Um, 18. That'll hit. Damage. Eight. All right. As you snap your whip in a very skilled and deftly manner, Blitzen turns into a pile of chocolate chips to spread out amongst the snow. And that'll be where we end the initiative. So, as you look around, you see all of the reindeer now reduced to piles of candy. Um, panic starts to set in because you can hear what sounds like more creatures incoming. And you hear... You hear the sound of of, of uh, Ikmanis. You recognize the voice. You hear the sound of a uh, a woman say, "Everyone, quickly inside! We must. We got to board everything up." Oh, today yeah, is going I, to I be like fun. This. this was supposed to be. Oh, this was supposed to be going into the holidays. What happened to selling trees? I I know I know. Come come with me. We're going to get inside, it's and reindeer. we're going it's to figure Santa. things out from Santa there. Coming back? Can we help him? You you've done stuff before. I I've seen you do things before. I I don't I don't know I can you. Do, I can do a lot of things, but I I can't put people's heads back on when um, their heads aren't well, there. That can't, that can't you don't know me. You don't know me. That's fine. But I think right now the best thing would be to listen to the, the lady on the roof and get inside a building. And then you can have this conversation with your father. I don't want to fight any more of these things. Okay, look, it's it's weird seeing somebody like my height, but I... You don't... I, don't, don't, don't make any comments about the way I look or anything like that. Get inside a house. I, I'm sorry, are you, are you saying I'm short? I know I'm short, but that, that's not nice. I also yeah, know right. I'm short, and it's kind of a sore spot. I mean, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna run up just... and grab grab Tony and <laughs> just head for the tavern to be like conversations inside. Wait, Dad, inside can we bring one of the reindeer? Maybe we can help them or something. I'm Dad, following they, that. They they are entirely Dyson. We will worry about finding if there's any other sick ones or figuring out what's wrong inside. But what happens to Christmas? Uh, Christmas is whatever we decide it is. It's about family, and so long as I have you, we are having a fine Christmas. Um, I, mean, hey, I am over. I am over kicking the sleigh and tearing off the bells and just throwing them in different directions. <laughs> I'm muted. Um, Catman. I don't know your name. What's your name? My name is Ekman. <laughs> this is my son, Tony. I apologize for the abruptness. Can can we continue uh, inside, understand. please? Yeah, no, I'm following you inside actively. I'm going to call you Eggy. While being carried away. <laughs> I'm Orpheus. Inside the tavern it's... now. Let's go. Mr. Mr. French, as you're tearing apart the sleigh, you can see that there is something with goat-like horns and a long scraggly beard in a red suit trimmed with white fur, carrying a large sack behind him, 
walking slowly towards you with what looks to be snowmen all around him slowly walking towards you. The snowmen are moving. There's about 15 or so snowmen and the lead person, the goat-like person with the beard, looks to be maybe 70 feet away from you right now. Coming out of the woods. Yep, nope, fuck that. I'm abandoning my mission and I am sprinting past everybody else to get the fuck away from that. Alright, where are you going? <laughs> do I see this as like I'm being dragged off? I don't know, do you? Uh, I I'd be looking around while I'm being. Man. Behind Mr. French. You can see. Some, you can see some snowmen coming out of the woods. Do I see the goat man, though? You don't. You can not see anything. We're inside. Your eyes are... Sorry. I was being... What the hell? Dad, come on. I'm so... Just... Stop it. Come on. I can handle all this stuff. It's enough trauma for one day. I mean... It's only so much trauma each day. You... You gosh, sure are a cool. good dad, aren't you? I don't know if I'd say that, but I am very cowboy. I'm trying to hear out there before you cover my eyes. Can, can you get your hand off my face? Jeez. Right, Ick, look, look. Can you Ick, Ick, can you get everyone inside now, please? I'm trying. Nobody listens to me. I'm following you inside actively. Yeah, there, there are weird things following. There's, there's big, white, fluffy things, and they're not marshmallows. As you all this is run choice. inside, run does inside. anyone does, does anyone not run inside the tavern that is being gestured to to run inside? I'm being dragged inside the tavern. I don't know if that qualifies or not. Is there anyone that goes anywhere else? I'm following the cat. I'm trying to make sure everybody goes inside. <laughs> okay. So everybody gets inside, and you see a white-haired girl maybe used to be like maybe 27 to 30 years old um close the door behind you all and start starts boarding it up with with wood <laughs> come on everyone help me close up the windows and everything yep dad what is oh, happening seriously uh boarding windows the doors first then then we'll Why? work on answers what's happening because we don't, I mean, we don't know yet. Um, is, tables, please. Will, will you yeah, please? Um, sort of. Reindeer tables and chairs. What is happening? I don't I mean, know yet. We're selling, we're, we're selling trees, and then. Oh my, oh my God! Tony, 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 you feel you feel a you, you feel the woman rest her hand on your shoulder, and she says, "It's okay, kid. Sleep," and you pass out. That's that's one way to handle a child. I I catch him and give her like the most scornful look I can manage with being a fluffy white cat. Oh, oh. Come on, he's I don't be okay. I know, but that was that necessary. I mean, were you gonna calm him down? I was working on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes, but we're on a time limit. Are we all it's thinking the same thing? Uh, and you are? We sacrifice the kid and hope that everything goes away. No. Don't you fucking we're not, dare. We're not sacrificing the child. I, I never should have left the city. I never should have left the okay. city. Okay, we're not thinking the same thing. That's all I needed to know. And I'm just going to get back to work. Is this, is this what the holidays are normally like here? Lay. Carefully lay Tony on one of one of the benches or chairs that are not being used to board up, up windows and doors. Just <laughs> set him there kind of carefully. And uh, go back to helping. <laughs> um, um, oh god. There's the <laughs> arrow. Fuck. Oh, I just said that one. Oh my. Excuse me. <laughs> All 
or ignore me. Who? I- Ick, this is your, your lack of concern over getting things done quickly is exactly the reason why we broke up in the first place. Can you move faster, please? I'm with the tall lady on this one. Yes, let's get moving. <laughs> just go to very exhausted, all looking like all kinds of just like tired with his day, just kind of yank the arrow out of his shoulder, set it down nicely on a table, and then start breaking chair legs and stuff to board up doors with flat wood and things like that. So, Aeneas, you found that uh, most of the people of the of the tavern, as you're kind of looking around trying to figure out what's going on, there's no one here. There's no bartender. There's no anyone else. But you do notice that since there's no bartender, all the alcohol is unattended. I'm already there at the bar. <laughs> can I can I see her doing this? <laughs> Uh, no, you're, you're still busy boarding up windows. Ineas does not really care about the windows. <laughs> she doesn't give two shits. Um, so, uh, as you guys all board windows, Alestia, the white-haired girl, casts a spell and says, Okay, some ground rules. I have us sealed in here until the sun rises. However, three things. Any of these three things can break the spell that has us sealed in here. One, anyone trying to look outside. All right, so we keep the kid unconscious. Two, anyone swearing. And three, okay, that anyone's anyone stealing. It's a protection from evil, meaning only good actions can exist within here. Okay. Otherwise, it breaks the barrier. Um. So what you're saying is, is that we're essentially, essentially dead in here. As he no, kind of just casually glances back at Igneous, going for the booze, <laughs> looks back. Can I, can I see her doing this now? Yes. All right. Um, can I throw one of my hand axes? I don't want to hit her, but I want to hit close to her. Fuck uh, you. Yeah, you can, you can, you can roll an attack on that. All right. <laughs> That's a nat 20 plus a 9 for a 29. I hate you. You, oh, you, yeah. pin, you pin the the uh, sleeve of her shirt to the do- to the wall with your axe. Don't you. Ah. Don't. Don't Damaging do that. Damaging property. That's evil. How's, how is stopping someone from stealing evil? I vote sacrifice. Evil. Evil. I think sacrifice is evil. Who are you? You weren't part of this fight from the beginning. Your point? That's that's Mr. French. He is a bit eclectic, but he lives up in the mountains. And you are? Alestia. Monster hunter. All right, all right. What? Alestia. Tom, Mm -hmm. what do you consider a monster? Uh, anything that should not exist and seeks only to harm those who try to live normal lives. So, both of those things have to concurrently happen, correct? Yes. Okay, perfect. Then I'm fine. I shouldn't exist, but that's beside the point. Um... Are we really throwing insults, Ick? You really want to stop that now? What? I heard I heard no cur- cursing. I haven't cursed. That's what I said. Well Anyways. So said- long as we obey those rules, we'll be safe to rest in here until morning time. However, Having encountered this problem before, I will say that our problems only get worse for the next two days. This has happened before. Yes, it happens to a different village every ten years. So, what I'm hearing is 
everything I've heard about this town has been a lie and I never should have moved here. Uh, yes, actually. The Wonder. information that you've heard happens as well every 10 years. You actually, if I remember correctly, you were given a promotion by your boss of some kind and were sent here to basically strike it out on your own, right? Something sound familiar? I was supposed to buy this bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't your boss, dear. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. Anyways, we should all be safe in here to be able to rest. If I remember correctly, we must deal with Krampus tomorrow mm. and Jack Frost the final night. Joy. Celestia, might I ask why you're here? Do, does the monsters outside not give a reason as to why I'm here? That's not I quite. I tracked they the, are. uh, I tracked the candy microbes, the, uh, parasites in the reindeer and came here to try to stop this before it started. I was a little Ooh. bit too late. So, uh, those candy things. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how, how do those pass on from one creature to another? Oh, it'd be bite from the primary infected, usually the one that glows red. Huh. Well, that's fun. Okay, that's good knowledge to have. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Usually the first signs would be craving uh, anything that has dairy in it or okay. is calcium efficient. All right. Uh, so cheeses, milks, that sort of thing. Okay. Dry mouth also happens as well. Uh huh. Does oh, anyone no. have any of those symptoms? My mouth's getting dry all of a sudden. Ah. Ah. Well. I'm not Mr. Sure. French, you got here after the one that in, in the red was dead. We could still tie him to a chair. Oh. Oh. Okay. To make okay. sense. Would the more common healing spells work to counteract this? Did you get bit? I believe several people have, or at least two. Hmm. Let's see here. What do I have? Hmm. attitude problem I, I don't have the proper healing spell <clears throat> yeah, which ones are needed uh, you would need some kind of lesser restoration or cure poisons and diseases I would like each of you to make me a insight check. Those of, you from out, those of you from outside of town do not get the insight roll. That's fine. I think that's only... Um, I think I count as local as well, right? Yes, you do. Alestia yeah, is no. also not local. I'm passed out currently still, correct? Yes, you are still passed yeah, out. Yeah, but you're local. <laughs> I figured that much. Insight. Am I local enough? Uh, that's yeah, a 12 for me. Alright. Ezekiel, what else? 
the rest of us are considered local, or who all yeah, are you so, considering? So, um, Brexicio, Ichmanis, um, not Igneus, uh, Mr. French, and that should be it. I'm so confused. Am I not considered a local? I did say you. He did. Learn to pay oh, attention so to boss. I thought he said not local. I am so confused now. What? Yeah, he said I'm not uh, local. Uh, 18. Err... Uh, All right. Was a witch, fudge and monkeys. Yeah. Yep, yeah, Ichmanis, you actually are just now remembering that the chocolatiers who work on the corner, they said that they had made a batch of um, candy toffees that were supposed to be given to everyone in the local shop. Um, that when chewed would cure them of any kind of poisons or diseases that they were currently infected by. It's kind of like a yearly thing that they do to help cleanse the body, so to speak. Um, and they made it into a toffee. And you remember that they were working on it because they were talking to you about it when you were selling them their tree. How far away from tavern is the chocolatier's place about a hundred feet but there's no mm. way to get there from inside ah uh, we do have an option that should work i assisted uh, the local chocolatiers make an annual Ah, we'll just secure all chocolate for the season. It should work for our purposes. However, their shop is at least 100 feet down the road. So we could just wait tomorrow to get... After... Not barrier... I am expecting that this illness works a little faster than that, am I right? I have seen it progress anywhere from an hour to, I think the longest case I've seen was about nine. Nine what? Hours. Oh, okay. How long does this barrier thing stay up? <sighs> Till dawn. How long is that? Uh, let's see here. We have about seven hours. Okay. So we can't exit. And we can't cure all chocolate. And we have seven hours until dawn. Next time on Twisted Christmas, catch up with Ikmanis and everyone else as they try to figure out what in the hell are they going to do next? Ikmanis, who is currently dying and dealing with baby mama drama. And catching up with Tony, who is still napping on the floor. And not to mention everyone's favorite Igneus, who is a raging alcoholic. Tune in next time for Twisted Christmas. Thank you and good night.